what's your background? Where, you know, where'd you grow up? Uh, all that good stuff. Well, I was born in South Carolina, but I left South Carolina at a very young age when my mother was suddenly taken away from me. So one of my mother's sister, my Aunt Josephine, who was living, I don't know where, somewhere in Florida, um, she came to South Carolina, the story I was told, and got me. And, and I lived most of my life in Polk County, Haines City, Florida, um, a little small town called Lake Hamilton, as well as Haines City. And how did you make your way up to Rochester? Well, I also grew up a migrant worker. So uh, a lot of years we used to come to Williamson to pick apples um, and the peaches. So uh, I was familiar with Williamson in, in, in that, that area. Um, but what brought me to Rochester, honestly, was my mom, uh, who raised me, said that she wanted to come to New York to have a better life with um, my stepfather she was with at that particular time. And they had a little young son. And it reminded me, since he was 18 months, and I was 18 months when my birth mother was taken away from me. So I kind of was still not ready to let my mom go. And I wanted to be there for my little brother to make sure he was going to be okay. So we took the train and landed in um, the train station. And honestly, we had $7 to our name. And we ended up in Lyons, New York. Um, and I ended up on welfare, which is something I did not like because I've always worked, even I I've always worked. Um, so after that, I, I got interested with the ARC of Wayne County. And I would go down and aggravate them all the time. And I finally landed a job, and that was my first start of working with people with disabilities. So I lived on the premises three and a half days out of the week, and it was amazing to help those individuals to become independent as possible so they can actually move out in their very own um, supportive apartments. So after living in Lyons for a while, I got a little bit of touch of Rochester because it was the big city to me. And I still had dreams of what I wanted to do. Um, so I actually started volunteering for an after-school program um, that was once with Sojourner House. Um, and Sojourner House helped mothers get their lives back on track that was running from, you know, problems and issues. And I kind of had that background of growing up. Um, and I was given the opportunity to lead an amazing group of kids in the arts. And those kids actually helped me to really become who I am right now. Um, to see how they shine when they thought that no one believed in them and they can do all these amazing things. That was fantastic. And those were things that I wanted to do, but as a migrant worker, I had to do a lot of farm work, so I didn't have those opportunities to do those things. So we was kind of working with each other, and they made me proud, I made them proud, and um, behold, somewhere in that doing Black History Month at the uh, Memorial Art Gallery, where some of the kids would go and do different activities, Caribbean drumming, um, that was taught by Mr. Freddie Colon. Um, and we all know Mr. Colon, a member of the Mumble King. Um, you know, the kids did some amazing tap dance. Um, you know, there was a choir. Um, well, one year the kids kind of, I don't know, they didn't want to do as much. And I contacted the art gallery who was Ms. Deborah McDell Hernandez, I think that's her last name, um, at the time. And we had a good relationship because she loved when the kids came to perform. So I said, or I asked her, would you like to have Frederick Douglass show up at the art gallery for Black History Month? So she was like, okay. But I don't think she knew that I was actually coming as Frederick Douglass. I assumed that she thought I was bringing this picture. And when I came, everybody was like, really, wow. So there was a photographer there, and each year the photographer always took pictures. So we started taking pictures with the families, and we gave them to the families for free. Um, I'm not an artist, um, but I am an artist, and I have some amazing friends like Mr. Sean, Sean Dunwoody who can draw and do some amazing murals of Frederick Douglass. So I wanted to be a part of the history of Mr. Douglass. Um, I didn't read much about him in my history books in school, um, so it's kind of like a self-taught education. And Sean embraced me, and after Sean embraced me, you know, I started going to things that he was doing. But I started going dressed as Mr. Douglas as an art piece, a living art piece. So one thing led to another. It got, it has become to, yes, an amazing, amazing venture. I've learned a lot about Mr. Douglas that I, I thought I never knew. I mean, my birthday is St. Patrick's Day. Here, Mr. Douglas went to Ireland and did some amazing things in Ireland. 
And I had no idea about that until I was asked to march in the St. Patrick's Day Parade as Mr. Frederick Douglass. It threw me off, honestly, because I'm such a social butterfly with my wings and everything. And when I asked and inquired, you know, I was given that little history, so I was like, wow. So it kind of, it, it made me even more proud that actually other people wanted me to take part, um, in not just in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, but as Mr. Douglas, because he stood out and he had an, an amazing um, connection in Ireland. So, and again, my birthday is St. Patrick's Day. So. There you go. What's it been like to have this type of connection to Frederick Douglass? It's been amazing. It's been a journey because I can't compare myself to Mr. Douglass, but growing up, you know, Mr. Douglass really didn't know his mom, and I lost my birth mother at the age of 18 months. Um, Mr. Douglass really didn't know his biological father. I didn't meet mine, so I was 38. So as a little boy, I was kind of lost in so many ways of, yeah, who am I? You know, I got my family members saying, oh, you look like your dad. Oh, you look like your mom. But really, who was Carlos? And when I finally got a picture of my mother, my birth mother at the age of 38, I honestly cried like a baby. And it felt like a completion part of what I was looking for and what I needed to really be me and to behold. And when I met my biological father, that was a whole nother arena of love and support. I have some amazing older brothers and sisters that love me and we get along as if we never ever had parted. So becoming Mr. Douglas or transforming myself into Mr. Douglas has brought so much joy and happiness from my own childhood to here now. I mean, the community really embraced me so much that I, I mean, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with the love um, and the support that I get. What do you think it is about Frederick Douglass that is particularly special to you? Well, what I feel particularly special about what Mr. Douglass is, as I said, it, it takes the village to raise a child. And it, one of his, you know, philosophy is something in that magnitude. Um, my village folks helped raise me. And when I landed a job with Sojourner House and I was able to give back, that made me feel like a s part of completion of society. It, it made me feel complete. Um, so, relating to Mr. Douglas, you know, we, we still need to embrace our young people. We need to be there for them. We need to listen at them. We need to embrace their creativity. Um, what I also learned about Mr. Douglas is he never gave up. Um, he didn't take sides. He was for the people. Um, I would extend my hand and you extend yours. Um, I kind of feel the same way. I, I, I'm for our people. I would do right by our people, but I would not do wrong for our people. Um, so a lot of that kind of, I, I, I laugh and I smile and I, I think back to growing up and you know, working in those fields and, and saying, wow, you know, here I am now. I am doing something that I've always dreamed but is it really real? You know, most people think it's all about the dollars, but it's not about the dollars. Um, it's about being yourself and being honest, and other people will love that joy that you um, give. Um, so to give that joy and that love, to, uh, that's, 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 that's fulfilling. So you're also known as the social butterfly. Yes. How did that come about? <laughs> Well, again, working with the kids at Sojourner House, my arts and my minds and my creativity. And it honestly started one year the um, jazz festival was um, going on. And one of the Xerox used to give away the big pictures. Um, you can get them for free. And they had different kind of things, social butterfly, whatever it may have been. And social butterfly stuck with me because I have a lot of friends who are musicians. So I'm kind of like the hype man of their event so when I go out it's like oh the party started and I'm looking like well the party probably should have been started but hey thank you so being sociable in the community I, I, I'm known everywhere more than I thought I was known um, I went to the hair store actually to get some stuff and the lady was like hey I, I know you I've I seen you somewhere before so you get those little things and you smile and you nod and you know but it, it makes you feel good and complete because those are dreams of mine, you know. I've always wanted to be a model, an actor, interior decorator. Okay, I didn't make it big, 
but being like being social butterfly, becoming Frederick Douglass, who was the most photographed man of ever. So I got tons of people who always like to take pictures. So I am modeling. When I get to dress up, I'm modeling. When I get to put everything together, I'm designing. And right now, I'm being real, but it's like I'm acting. So that childhood dream is not the fame and glory, but the fulfillment that I got. I'm making, I'm okay, I'm cool. I love that. Uh, last question for you. Where do you hope to take this and Mr. Douglas and all that? Well, I hope to take the butterfly to an amazing level. I, I need to get myself together in more order. I was thinking more like a butterfly academy, teach people how to make butterflies and unique patterns, have a fashion show, bring the life and the joy. With Mr. Douglas, I would like to continue to learn more as I get more support from the community um, of, of his history here in Rochester. Um, um, and with the little igloo, I mean, hey, if, if you need an igloo for a winter event, um, I'm your man, call me, you know, we can figure something out. <laughs> yeah.